What's up, Zach Oates here, author, entrepreneur, and customer relationship guru. Welcome to Give an Ovation, growth strategies for restaurants and retailers, where we find industry leaders to share their secrets to grow your business. This podcast is brought to you by Ovation, the actionable guest feedback tool that works on or off premise and is easy, real time, and actually drives revenue. Learn more at ovationup.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Give an Ovation. Today, we have got Werner Lomker with us. This is, this is awesome. It, it's rare that you get like a celebrity on your podcast, but I'm going to tell you, Werner is a celebrity. Um, he refers to himself as the average Joe working hard, but he actually is a Domino's franchisee with 11 locations. He's crushing it, and he is the world's fastest pizza maker. And recently... I watched this video. It was incredible. You did a, a Facebook Live video, and you made you broke the world record for number of pizzas made in an hour. Not not just broke it, but like demolished it. It was what was the record before uh, you posted your video? So the world record is was uh, two hundred and six pizzas um, and made so, in, so, yeah in fifty five minutes though. In so. 55 minutes. Okay. So that's, you know, when you think of that to so 206, so you think about that's like the world record. So what'd you get? Like 207, 208? Uh, no, uh, we, we hit 278 yesterday uh, on Wednesday. Wow, man. Word, that is awesome, man. And what'd you do with those pizzas? Obviously you gouged people and you, you sold them for double the price because it's hard times and people want pizza, right? Oh, sure. They touch these magic hands. They gotta be, <laughs> they gotta be extra. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course, we gave them away to the frontline workers. Uh, we took them to the Brampton Transit. Those people are working really hard and over to uh, one of the main police headquarters um, right after. Dude, love that, Werner. Not, not only do you, do you have, uh, you know, make really fast pizzas, but you make fast friends. Appreciate, appreciate what you're doing, man. That, that's awesome. Um, so let's, let's, let's dive into it. Tell us a little bit, you have uh, 11 locations, things are obviously really crazy. Um, what types of things did you do and how did you get the word out about the changes that you made? Sure. So it obviously all happened pretty quickly. Uh, we didn't know what the government's uh, requirements are gonna be for our takeout delivery restaurants like our own and we even heard rumors that they were gonna shut us down. Um, so fortunately they didn't and uh, simply used this glass wall uh, and just started putting ideas up and finding the biggest, you know, identifying the biggest challenges. And then we really started ranking for uh, pickup orders and delivery orders. Said so like, you know, here's the furthest we can go to make the, uh, the customer and the employee the safest. Um, but as we got higher up, that, higher up that list, the operational challenge got harder and harder. Um, so we basically, we did that. And what we did is we're like, man, we don't know if we can execute on this. We don't know if the customer is going to understand that's the safest level. Um, especially this is before long lineups and physical distancing became mm -hmm. the new norm. So we decided to uh, keep the, the process, the ordering process as similar as possible, but also going as safe as possible. Um, so our business is a little bit different. You know, it's, the transactions look different when customers pay, how the customer pays, how they order, whether it's online, on the phone, on, you know, by walking in. And then when they receive their food, have they paid yet? Do they still need to pay? Do they show up at the store and still need to order? There's so many variations right. on um, managing this. So what we decided to do, the biggest noticeable change was um, went over to the hardware store and bought a bunch of plastic sheeting uh, made the made the restaurants look a little bit more like a crime scene, but <laughs> we we pulled out. Hopefully, hopefully, no spilled tomato sauce. <laughs> yeah, no, no spilled tomato sauce. We left it as open as possible, but we really wanted to give our customers and our staff uh, the true ability to avoid direct contact with um, with other people who may unsuspectingly be carrying the virus. Uh, yeah. So, you know, we did that and Domino's has been a leader uh, internationally. There's markets that are way ahead of us. There's learnings from China and, you know, they were already doing 
this uh, zero contact delivery where you know the driver would set a pizza down on a, a table or a bench and then contact the customer and they step back their six uh, six feet or two meters and then have the exchange without ever having to come close to the customer so we that made became mandatory in um, for every delivery and now we had a way to at least do these thousands of exchanges every week in a similar fashion without having direct contact. Love that, man. And, and when you said something, you, you said uh, that you put up a glass wall and you put a bunch of ideas on it. Did you actually get your employees and managers together to come up with some of these ideas? Sure. So we have a, um, I share the office with another franchisee and we have a, a leadership team that works with us directly. So we brainstormed the ideas and then before we launched them, we actually brought in our top managers and said, what do you think of all these changes? Can you do this? Um, gotcha. And bringing that in, I mean, we were still faced with um, how do you exchange cash? Because cash is, you know, definitely perceived to be really dirty. It is really dirty. Um, touching cash cannot make you sick. But of course, if you don't have the ability to wash your hands right after, then you touch something else and you know how the virus spreads. And so you have drivers who are customers want to pay with cash. And so how do they deal with that? And it was actually one of our managers that just said, why don't they just take a plastic bag with them and have the customer put the money in a plastic bag? And, you know, oh. it was just like, I never thought of that. So you have managers, you know, who deal with this all the time and uh, just helping improve upon every system. So yeah, things That's like that. Well, that, and I love that you're involving the front lines because when it comes down to it, you know, as, as much as we get involved in the business from, you know, a management perspective, if you have more than one location, it's really hard to, to stay involved because then all of a sudden things need to get taken up a level. Um, so bringing them in, I think that is a fantastic idea. Awesome. Um, and what, what of these things are you going to keep going forward? And what are these things are you going to, uh, you know, kind of do away with? Or a better question is, what's your thought process of making that decision? How, how are you going to decide what stays and what goes? Right. Well, I guess because the future is so uncertain, um, I know we're definitely making our lobbies look more professional now. So just hit send basically in order to uh, – replace and extend existing barriers, add um, acrylic barriers to the ordering, kind of like you might see at a grocery store now, um, yeah. but more professionally installed. Uh, I could see that being here for 12 to 18 months. Um, who knows how it's going to go, but I, that one's going to stick around. Uh, finally, we were able to go cashless on a technical, from a technical side. So one thing about Domino's is our online or on app ordering is there's a really high percentage of this. It's, you know, ranges from 60 to 80%. Wow. And if you don't have a technical solution to let the customer know, I'm sorry, we're not accepting cash at this time. You're going to have a lot of really disappointed customers after you've already made the pizza and after you're at their door and you're putting your staff in a really untenable situation over and over and over again, where they're asking for money for a product and the customer's like, well, all I have is this. And you know, you don't want to put your staff in that situation. So the technical side of it is there now for the online platforms. And therefore I wonder if we're ever going to come back to cash. Interesting. Um, that's going to be from a business standpoint. Sure. It's a little more expensive to take the, um, the online or the electronic transaction, but the security of the teams, the, the delivery experts, um, cash is not exactly ideal. So I think that's going to stay. We, uh, we're even paying some of our, our drivers. They are just getting paid out every day on cash. And there's been a great new solution that we found to pay them electronically. Now, uh, that's probably going to stick around. Um, I think the, the distancing inside of the locations, mm -hmm. I, I hope that that one stays and just the extra sanitization, um, increased frequencies and just the customer sanitization station. I hope, I hope that uh -huh. that sticks around too. Um, yeah, because you, you have that right as you walk in, you have a, a sanitation, sanitization station where people can clean their hands. And then um, was it, 
how frequently is it? Was it every 30 minutes that you're cleaning some of your surfaces now? Yes. But pre COVID it, you know, it was two hours was the, the rule, you know, make sure you're sanitizing all the tools, all the tables, everything, every two hours um, with COVID the direct direction from above was every hour. And we're just, we just said, we're just going to do every half hour because you know, you almost can't be too safe. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of services, a lot of touch points, but you may as well do it. Yeah. Um, and we're going to have people to do it anyways. And for us, initially when this first happened and you started hearing about places closing, my thought process was how do I keep my staff working? Uh, they, you know, who knows how fast the government's going to work on supporting them. If there's going to be support, there was no answers at the time. Uh, these are not employees that have three months of their expenses sitting in an emergency fund. You know, they're month to month renting, you know, sometimes renting basements, houses or whatever it is. And just like, if they can't work, the stress that's going to come on them is going to be just unbearable. So we kind of just made a decision. Like, you know, we're not laying people off. Like we're going to figure this out or be busy enough. And sure enough, we've been busy enough um, to keep that going. And so it's really, it's, how do we keep them safe? How do we keep the stores open so we can keep, uh, the, keep them earning their paychecks? And that is, those are leading the, leading the way. So staying open means staying safe and having no sickness in the store and being really diligent with illness. And at the time, there was still some travel. So just making sure we stayed on top of that. And, and how do you look at uh, customer feedback as you go forward into this new normal? Good question. I, one thing that has happened for sure, we've always been really, um, really appreciative and diligent about trying to get as much feedback as possible. Even bad feedback is fine because it allows us to deal with it. Um, and having those systems in place have been great. But some of the comments that have come through even uh, just show the heightened awareness that the customers have um, for following the actual procedures. You know, you might get feedback. I don't feel like my delivery driver provided um, contact free experience. And so it gives gotcha. you a opportunity to go back and say, Hey guys, like procedures and things on PowerPoint presentations and, you know, PDFs are wonderful, but are they being executed? So the, the customer plays a huge role in this because we cannot be at every transaction and, you know, and I'm not at every store. So it's really up to, you know, us, but also working with the customer to make sure that they're executing and not, you know, not taking the easy way out and putting themselves and the customer and our business and everybody else's livelihoods, livelihoods at risk. Yeah. So it's kind of, I mean, now I guess you kind of know how a doctor feels, right? You show up and you're like, Oh, well, actually I did some research online and, and let me tell you what I think I have, but yeah, but now, now you have a much more informed customer base, right? So your customers were before, it was like they didn't even know if Domino's had a cleanliness policy, right? I, I'm sure, I'm sure that there are like you know ten people in our like circle of uh, acquaintances who don't really know Domino's that that even knew that there was a two hour uh, cleanliness standard, right? Because um, you know you go into some places and different places run things differently, and people don't run a tight ship like you do all the time, Werner. And but now we're faced with a lot more of that with a much more uh, with a customer base who, who wants that cleanliness where the thing I always say is that, you know, OCD is the new normal, right? That, that's <laughs> going to be something that uh, we just need to take our, our, everything is going to get shifted up. Right. And those people who were acting as if, you know, uh, they're acting as if things were three months ago, they're going to be looked at as weird, you know, um, so I guess, w and, and with that, with that feedback, I, I love that you, you actively solicit feedback from your employees, from your customers, I guess in, in your mind, um, as you move forward, is that something that, that becomes, uh, how do you make that more of a priority? Cause it seems like that's something that, you know, is, is going to be important for you. Well, I think it's, I guess it's multifaceted approach. One is letting customers know what is expected. And that's got to be customer facing, you know, whether it's marketing um, or just what the experience looks like, you know, the little, the simple video that I threw through on uh, social there. Um, 
but then it's also make sure they have an avenue that is useful for them to use to uphold, to give us the feedback. Um, so I we we send every order goes with a little sticker on the box that says you know take a picture of this QR code and just tell us if we missed the mark. And so we're like we're asking them to give us bad feedback and just making sure that we do. And now every even if the feedback is hey you forgot my garlic dipping sauce. Um, the person who's managing that aspect of it is saying, okay, well, we're going to take care of the dipping sauce, but also how was your zero contact experience yeah. and making sure that we're asking the customer the right questions, even getting them to think about it. Because if we are going to set a higher standard, um, it's only going to be appreciated if people recognize that there's a higher standard to be had. Uh, so we're really, you know, just trying to make sure that we are, top of mind. I mean, you know, you said three months ago, like a month ago, these new ideas, they feel like it was half a year ago. Right. They're changing. <laughs> the expectations have just changed so quickly. I know. I, I've told people that the last five weeks has been the longest year of my life. It's been, <laughs> it's been crazy. Yeah. You're telling me. So love that. Okay, any, any, uh, any last um, pieces of advice for these owners, operators out there, these restaurants, uh, maybe they're opening, maybe they're about to be opened. Um, you know, what, what, what advice would you have for them? I would, I would say what we're trying to do is we're trying to be empathetic and meet our customers where they are. Um, so that means I know financially it's tough for everybody and, you know, we're going to want to raise our prices and we're going to want to hit our margins. Um, but we have to look past that and we have to say, you know, we're trying to build a loyal customer base for a long time. And that means that recognizing that everybody's strapped financially now. Uh, there's so much uncertainty. Um, and in the food business, I mean, we are busy. We have the opportunity to make people happy and have a moment of, it's a break from real life and the real crap they're going through. So let's just own that and make sure that that, that time, that food, that um, little bit of social normalcy is, is there for them. And let's not try and you know, make it all back when we get back into business or things get back to normal, let's, let's keep going and keep giving as many people access to the, the normal fun experience that we can. Dude, Werner, I love that, man. My takeaways are uh, one collect ideas from all around, right? Partners, um, you know, employees. I love that Two, customer, keep customers, and employees safe and similar, like make it as similar as possible to what the old process was. But just with this added layer of safety. I love that idea. Three, learn from others who are similar to you. I love that you're going out and looking at how are other dominoes uh, doing it. But you know, we could do that if they have other franchisees or if you have other locations similar to yours, ask them what's going on. Um, four, get as much feedback as possible, making it useful and asking the right questions. And then five, meet customers where they're at because there's gonna be a new normal, but we're gonna get to some form of normal. So. Werner, today's ovation goes to you for being not just, uh, like I said, you're fast at making pizza, um, but great guy as well. So appreciate you coming on. Appreciate what you're doing to uplift people and, uh, and help people out. And thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Appreciate it. Glad you're with us today. And thank you. Thank you to the risk takers, the troublemakers, the crazies who are keeping this world clothed and fed. You're the ones who deserve an ovation. Again, this podcast was sponsored by Ovation. To see how we can help you grow your business, go to OvationUp.com. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, remember to give someone in your life an ovation today.